Hi guys, in this video I will be sharing my experience in learning how to drive and just giving you um, an insight of how I felt when I was taking the lessons with a little bit of encouragement. I just wanted to make this uh, video to be an encouragement to not only those of us with disability, but for anybody who may have something that is blocking them or keeping them in one spot. So again, I hope you enjoy it. Have a great day. I'm glad to see y'all today. I come on today to talk about, I don't know what the title is going to be. Either it's going to be learning to drive in my 40s or um, first time driver in my 40s with a disability. So I thought that this would be a good uh, topic to talk about um, being as though I am two years in, almost two years in with learning how to drive um, November 28th will make a year that I have had my car I think I want to start with how did I get started or how did I work up the nerve to um, get my driver's license or to want to get my driver's license okay let me back up for those of you who are not who just scrolled down and happened to see this title and was interested my name is Shaquana uh, welcome to my channel welcome to my little community um, I have cerebral palsy that's my disability and my purpose for my videos is to show that with determination faith and grit whatever you want to happen will happen with God on my side, I couldn't have got this far. So, for those of you who are just visiting, thank you. If you don't mind, click that subscribe button, like and share, and you know, you know what I mean. Help your girl out because the likes do um, make my channel grow. I have a disability. Um, it's cerebral palsy, and it deals with the brain. Um, it happened from different uh, ways, but mine happened due to lack of oxygen. At birth but anyway so now on with the video girl how do you get how did you get your license how did you get over the fears what started you to want to get your license and how did it feel in your 40s learning how to drive for the first time how did it feel knowing that your son got his license before you got yours all of that stuff I'm gonna try to answer in this video don't know I may miss I don't have anything wrote down because I feel like if I have anything wrote down I always miss something so I'm just gonna go with what I remember and there will be photos of different points and times and year that things happen so here we go so my journey to learning how to drive started actually seriously in 2017 I um, was sitting down out of frustration, tired of depending on family, tired of having to uh, cancel doctor's appointments, just tired of having to basically let that one thing be a block with me not having total independence. I began looking again because when I was about 18 to 22, I was looking into um, what did my state have to help uh, individuals with disabilities such as cerebral palsy or uh, lost limbs or anything like that learn how to drive to no avail I found nothing in the state of Alabama and that was between 18 and 22 I found nothing so um, I gave up on it and just pretty much said I guess this is the cards that I'm dealt or this is the cross I have to bear so depending on people was gonna be my end God said no but remember having a dream um, or having a vision of me in a red car and I didn't say anything to people for a long time but as the years went in my 20s and my 30s, I still had that that vision or dream and 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 the voice of God would say to me, this is going to happen. This is what your heart's desire. You do what it takes to prepare for it. So 
um, getting on at my late thirties, I began looking again. So when I looked, I found um, out that my um, area rehabilitation center uh, in the next city that's next to me would help me in aiding and getting uh, my license. So I went through that. To my disappointment, once I went through it, went through it um, they told me, um, now that you've went through it, um, we can't help you get your license until you go to school. So I was confused as to how that was going to work. I was really confused. Uh, mind you, when I had the visions or the dreams and I knew that I was going to get my license and God kept telling me, I believe in faith and I do pray. And yeah, yeah, I, I gave up so many times, gave up so many times. But having a support system such as family, friends, pastors, church friends, close I know that can pray and, and see my dream or see my vision or see what I want to accomplish, accomplish in life. If you get somebody like that in your corner, then the times when you do want to give up, uh, they won't let you give up. But I just said that God let me know that I have to prepare. Um, in my early 30s, I got my permit. You know that that that's nothing hard. I you know it's a written test, so it took me. I got it. The 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 second try. I think the first time I missed two, but I went right back. So I had my permit for all these years. Um, and you're probably wondering, oh, they didn't expire. They didn't put a limit on mine because I had a disability for my permit. Now this is the permit. Um because I didn't know when I was going to learn how to drive. I didn't know if I was going to be able to learn how to drive. So getting back to where I left off, um, there I had searched in the rehabilitation center, um, vocational rehab center in the next city. Um, they are the ones who told me once I went through what they wanted me to go through, all of the paperwork, all of the da da da. So went through them for them to only tell me that the only way that they can help me is if I go to school, go to college, get a job. Now, I was thinking, uh, how this gonna happen? Uh, I think I've told you that it's hard for me to get around. I canceled doctor's appointments because family is not always available to get me there. Even if they are, you just get tired. So you you just give up and don't do stuff. So I was as I was too confused as to how these people thought that I was going to make it to school or make it on a job. The city where I stay, we don't have bus service. We don't have a cab service. So how was, God, how was I going to get around to get to school and get to work? I wanted to do all those things, but not having a car, not being able to drive. My purpose for coming to vocational rehab center was to get y'all to hopefully lead me to somebody who would teach me how to drive. Okay. That didn't happen. So I did what they wanted. That didn't happen. I ended up leaving under them, from under them. And um, I think it was maybe two years or three years later, I le left up under, from up under them, uh, their leadership or what they wanted me to do and all the stipulations. And I just, I didn't give up, but I said it had to be another way. It had to be another way for this to happen. So I began to prepare. I began to pray more. I began to share what I wanted to happen with people that I knew that would believe with me and pray with me and hope with me because y'all, as much as things has happened with this disability with me, I am determined. That's one thing that I, I think that God puts into people with disabilities, especially those of us who are born with a disability. Um, we got natural um, determination. Now, some of us, it's harder. 
at times for me it was hard to have the determination because you look at so many blocks and i know people able-bodied people come across blocks and come across this and that but for me the blocks and the and the um the stop signs and the nose seemed like they were coming and coming but i kept and i held the faith and i kept trusting and so during this time once i had dropped the um, participation with the rehabilitational rehab center um i began to search myself and i just asked god you know show me who to call show me how to call so i ended up getting in touch with um i don't have the information right now but i will put it uh down in the description box as soon as i find it or i may very well find a picture of me holding the information but I got in touch with a program that trains people to drive with disabilities. They were in the next city um, from me. And I don't necessarily know, did I find it in a phone book? Did I find it online? I think I found it online. But anyway, once I found them, I called them. You know, kind of hoping, kind of scared, kind of, but mostly hoping. And to me, it was either, if it don't work this time, then I know I was destined just to depend on people to take me everywhere. I will not, never have total independence. Or, if it does happen, then God is yet who he say he is. He has kept every promise. So in touch with them. And then they talk to me and they tell me, okay, yeah, set up the appointment and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, you fill out a whole bunch of paperwork and you have to get a whole bunch of this or that. And they ask me, did I work with the local vocational rehab um, center, the place that I was working with three or four years before? So I told them I was, but I'm not anymore because it didn't make sense that the only way they could help me is if I got college education or I got a job and I didn't have a car. So once I told them that, they said, well, it doesn't make sense to us either, but come and um, fill out all the paperwork and then we'll see if you qualify. So I did that, got, got my husband at the time and he, thank God for him because he was there. Um, but anyway, so once I did all that, filled out the paperwork. They uh, approved me. I was excited. Didn't know what to happen. I thought maybe they were going to tell me, listen, you got to get a car and da, 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 to drive and do this. But I was excited nevertheless. So when I got there or got the call, they told me that I needed to come and go through a battery of testing. Now, the testing, um, what did the test include? They included um, vision. Uh, they included cognizant, they included um, reaction uh, tests because, why reaction tests is because a lot of us with a disability, especially CP, because our muscles are either too loose or too tight, um, we could have our reaction, time reaction could be off. So that wouldn't be good to drive with. But I knew and I kept praying each step, each step that God would be in the midst of it because without him this wouldn't have happened it just wouldn't have happened so um get into the part where i go through the test and i'm doing the vision test and um the lady had me to look at a paper that has some images on it that are supposed to be 3d now i didn't know that these images were supposed to be 3d so I'm going through the paper. She's asking me, do you see the bees flying towards you? Now I'm thinking this lady crazy because these bees ain't doing nothing for me. They ain't coming towards me. So then she, we get done with the test and she tells me, she say, well, miss, miss good on the testing, but the only thing we're kind of worried about is, um, your depth perception. So I hang my head and I'm praying the whole time. And I say, oh, and I quickly remember 
that I went to the doctor some years back, the eye doctor, and they told me I didn't have 3D. I couldn't see 3D or I wouldn't be able to watch 3D movies. Mind you, I have never watched a 3D movie. Never went to one, so didn't know I couldn't see 3D. So anyway, so right then I remember that I, okay, you forgot you can't see 3D. So is that anything to do with depth perception? So I asked her and she said, yeah. And so, um, Anyway, so she says to me, and I began to cry. I ain't ashamed to say it because I have overcame all this and took these years and years and years. And it takes, sometimes it only takes one thing to happen or to be said when you feel like you're getting ahead and then a block comes. And at this time, when the tears started flowing, it was like, I didn't come this far to tell her to, for her to tell me that I can't learn to drive because I can't I don't have good depth perception. Now you know, being a passenger in a car, you don't realize how much it takes to have to learn to drive a car or how much it takes to drive a car. You don't realize that your eyes have to be or I didn't. Let me let me say that. Because being a passenger in a car, I um just trusted the person who was driving to get me where I needed to go. And if they didn't know where they were going, hey, we looked it up on Google Maps and we followed that. I had no clue that how hard it was to keep in mind that you got to look in front of you, you got to look on the side, you got to look in the back, you got to look and make sure before you do it. So, mind you, when this lady told me this, I was like, oh, wow. So I cried a little bit and she said, don't worry, don't worry. So I'm beginning to say, okay, okay. Okay, don't worry. She told me, don't worry. So, she told me that a lot of people with depth perception problems drive, and they drive great. So, just like I'm smiling now, I was smiling then. So, I was like, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, when, once I did all of that, I think it took all of about um, a month for them to tell me whether I would qualify for driving courses. So when I got the call, it was in, I think late of 2017, I think November of 2017, I think. The first week of lessons, they you come and I, and I had to drive to the place, had to get somebody to take me to the place that was in the next city over, which is about, um, 32 miles away so I was kind of worried about that but then I prayed and I after they told me I was accepted I said God you made a way you made a way for this to happen so if you make a way you're not gonna make a way for me to get this far and put the brakes on the rest of it so God I'm trusting you for me to find rides because I know the same person won't be able to take me every time. I don't know how often the lessons are going to be. God answered that prayer at the first day. Now, I met the nicest of the trainers. If you happen to be in the area and you're trying to figure out how to learn how to drive and you have CP or a disability that causes you limited driving or limit your chances of driving, check these people out again i will try to have the information up here or i will snap a picture and put it in there but anyway um i went through i went with three different trainers during the whole time okay but my first week of lessons or my first day of lessons was the worst i was excited i was praying i didn't know what they were going to have me do I just, I, I had never, well, let me back up. Let me back up. I can't say I had never been behind of a wheel of a car because while I was going through and found out that I was approved to be a part of the program, I had a friend who was brave enough to put me in her car that had no hand controls and take me to a parking lot across from where I stay and she trusted and she believed that I could drive. Now, this is without hand controls. She let me drive her car. 
Never driven a car before ever in my life. Never, ever, ever, ever. But she had the faith. She was one of those people that I would tell what I wanted to have done. She was one of those people that helped me. And so um, she was my first opportunity to drive. So she took me in the meantime, between time of me being approved and them starting my first lessons. And so she, I think that happened maybe three months, three to four months, I think. It, it was a long process, and it was tiring and waiting. But anyway, so she got me to that point. Thank you so much, Pearl. Thank you. She got me to that point. So when she got me to that point, uh, y'all hear my son coming in. Um, but when she got me to that point, it was so exciting because she had faith and she trusted that I would be able to do this. So, shout out to her because she was the first person. Okay, now let's get back to me being at the vocational rehab. So, my first week of driving was the scariest, like I said before. They supply you with the car. Let me let me say that. When 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 I got there, you meet up with your trainer or your yeah, your trainer for the day. And like I said, I met the nicest one, the first one. Um, he was great. Um, but I was a nervous wreck because he told me to get in this car. Y'all, it was not a car. It, it looked like the biggest vehicle they had on the road. The, I mean, to me, it looked like the biggest car they could find to teach me. Somebody who never driven before how to drive in. That was the craziest thing. The, it, it, I, I don't even, but it was a big car. And I, I'm so little, so I'm looking at this car. He, we go out the car, out the door of the building, and he says to me, "Okay, we're gonna get in this car right here." And I'm looking, and I'm thinking, and I actually said to him, "You know, I had never driven before, right?" <laughs> and he says, "Yes, I know." So I'm getting in the car, and he tells me you know, walking me through the hand controls and all of this stuff. And I will have a picture, if I could find it, of how my hand controls look. Or or I'll just go in my car and take a picture. Yes, yeah, my car. Um, but anyway, so he, we, we're in the parking lot, and he walks me through everything and what everything is, the, the hand controls and all of this stuff. And I'm nervous because I'm left-handed. But my hand control, the main gas and brake, is on the left side. It's on the left side. And then you have this thing called a spinner knob that's on the right side that helps me steer, steer the car better and make turns better. So, no hand is free while you're driving. So, mind you, this is my first lesson. First lesson. So, he tells me, crank the car up. Okay, I'm cranking the car up. I'm thinking, I don't even know how to back this car out. I hadn't, listen, I got my permit, but I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to driving. But he was very patient. He was very patient. The first month or so in learning how to drive was the scariest. I'd say the first six months because I didn't know all the rules of the road. I didn't know exactly what side of the road that I should be on. Yeah, I know I was driving with people or riding with people and I should have known all that, but it's different when you're in a driver's seat. It's just totally different when you're in a driver's seat. So I was confused, and especially when you get to those big intersections, y'all know, it, Anybody with a disability that's learning how to drive and that has learned how to drive with hand controls, y'all understand what I'm saying. I hope y'all feel me. But this is for, you know, just informational purposes. Just let y'all know my experience in learning how to drive. So, okay. After some months, I started getting the hang of it. Um, I think my lessons went from, I started in 17 and about 18, uh, October of 18, I had been driving with the um, trainers for about a year. And I think I have a picture. I don't know. I'm going to try to find most of the pictures that I have to try to walk y'all through what I did. But so I had been doing, walk, uh, doing with the trainers for about a year. And so when I did that, and so they, um, after that year, they told me that, I 
was, no, let me back up. Um, let's see, was it about a year? It was a little less than a year. And then so the following, I began, I, during this time I got discouraged. I almost caused a bad accident. I almost gave up. I used to call my son while he was in college and cry and say, this ain't for me and I can't do it. I almost wrecked and I almost caused somebody else to wreck and horns were blowing at me. And oh, the worst thing that happened while I was learning to drive was y'all, I got stopped by the police. I did. I got stopped by the police. That was the, to me, that was the worst thing. I, I thought, I, I'm not going to be able to, I'm not, they're not going to give me, they're not going to give me my license. They're not going to say I can drive because I done got stopped by the police with the trainer in the car. <laughs> so, that, I have to tell y'all about that experience because it was one of the worst. So that'll be a, another story time because this video is almost already 30 minutes long. But got past that, got past that incident. And lo and behold, um, my, my lessons, they start off being two to three days a week they were. Or two, yeah, two to three days a week every two weeks. So it was like I was getting maybe um, six lessons at the most in a month. So, yeah. And so, yeah, that's how it started. So toward the end, um, the trainers, if they had anybody to cancel, they would call me to see if I could get there and wanted an extra hour or if it was my day to train and somebody uh, canceled before me, they would call and ask me if I wanted another hour. And yes, the, the, the lessons were an hour, but by the time I got there and got in the car and got situated and they figured out where they want to take me, literally my driving time was probably 30 minutes at the most. So getting mostly maybe three hours a week of training to drive, I thought it would never come. It seemed so long. But now looking back, it wasn't long at all because God is quick in what he says. You, you, you better believe it. So, um, so, um, but during that time, the whole time, uh, in between the times that I was taking lessons, my friend that I told y'all that let me and trust me to drive her car, she would come and get me, even though she didn't have hand controls in her car. She would come and get me and take me around the city. She let me drive at night. She let me drive in the daytime. Anytime she had free time. Now, this woman works a lot. And she had a lot of stuff to do on her own. But she was just that good of a friend and brave enough of a friend. Because I got a few more good friends. But I don't think the rest of them are brave, uh, was brave as her. But she was a bus driver. So, I knew she taught my son how to drive, and he's a good driver, good driving son. And so, if anybody that God sent in my path to be brave, to help me get to where I am today, was her. This woman, she she loved, she drove school buses for I don't know how many years. But anyway, so I knew I was in safe hands. But um, getting back to where we are, to me being... Um, my last week in lessons, my last week of lessons was um, in November of 19, or it may have been the first week in November of 19. Yes. Um, so, no, the, the, the last week, the first week of November in 18, let me go back, in 18. That was my last week of lessons. So... I got my favorite trainer because, again, I had three. It was Chris, and I can't remember the other one that I didn't like so much. That's probably why I can't remember his name. And most of all, Mr. Cedric. Um, but anyway, so uh, he told me, uh, I was happy to see that I had him. And he had told me the, the, the week, the other, the prior week that I had trained, he had told me, he said, well, you ready to do mostly everything. Let's go. You know, and I said, oh, and he, he said, yeah, he said, we're going to see. And they don't really tell you what day they actually making the test day. They don't tell you at all. 
what day they actually making a test day. So, uh, no, I think I got the timing wrong. I think I was ready to, um, my final lessons were around March. Yeah, March. Because I remember telling my son that I may have my license. I want to get my license before his birthday. So, and... Or I said, I, I pray that I get my license for your birthday. And actually, I did have training on his birthday, April the 11th. But I didn't get my license. And that discouraged me. That discouraged me because I thought, you know, I've been working so hard and I really wanted to do this so that he could have a good birthday present or I could give him a good birthday present because he was off at school. And I had been working hard and I made that goal for myself. I made that goal for myself, and I was thinking, you know, I can't believe I didn't get it. My heart was broke. I came home, cried it out, and I realized after a couple of days later, you know, God let me know that you said you were trusting me, and it's my timing. It's not your timing. It's my timing. So, okay, I brushed that off, and, and, I, and I thought, I said, okay, well, I got another date I can reach. I said March 20, April 25th. Now that's my niece's, one of my niece's birthdays. And I, and I said to her, I said to myself and I prayed to God and I asked God, if it's your will, let me get my license either before her birthday or on her birthday. Because I knew that my training was going to be that week of her birthday. My next training was going to be that week of her birthday. So, um, the first couple of days, of that week didn't go so well. I was doing stuff that I knew better not to do, and the trainer was asking me, have you forgotten how to drive? What are you doing? So that in my circle, that believe and hope with me, you know, because you can't have everybody. Everybody ain't rooting for you to do good, and you got to learn that, that everybody is not rooting for you to do good. But it, when God send people to you, to help encourage you and put things in your life and to help you reach that goal, then when you know who they are, cherish those people. So cherish the family, cherish the friends that God placed in your life to help push you. So the first two days of that week didn't go so well. I, you know, call my son as I normally do. I don't know if I'm gonna get it. I wanna get it so bad. I wanted to get it on your birthday. Didn't get it on your birthday. And then he said, well, maybe you can get it on my niece's, by my niece's birthday. And I was like, he didn't know that I had already said and asked God. I was like, okay, that's, that's another person saying the same date. So it, it was on her birthday. I remember the day and my husband then took me, and I, I think I remember telling him, I really want to get my license today because it'll be good to give my niece. I was saying it could be in the same month as my niece's birthday and my son's birthday. I would be so happy. And he was like, well, yeah, if you don't get it, you're doing good. So, you know, he was encouraging too. So I went in there, and, and the trainer said, okay, get in the car. I got in the car and I said a little prayer. I always said a prayer before I started driving that car. I always said a prayer because I can't do it on my own. And I still do that today. So anyway, got in the car and, the drive, and he took me through the course. And we was coming back to the building. And we were at a red light. And it was a red light where, you know, you can turn right on red. Yeah, I was still second guessing how you turn right on red to make sure people don't, you know, I was still second guessing that a little bit. I knew the rules of the road by then, but I was still second guessing it. So, um, we were turning on, we were getting ready to turn on the road. And then, so, um, after I turned, um, the right on red, and then we had to turn onto the street where the building actually was. And I had a habit of, if I saw a car coming way down the road, I was too scared to cross and I was taking forever. And so the trainer was telling me, you can't sit and wait that long on that car. You could have made it. So that was always his, his thing with me. He was like, you got enough time. You got to judge when you got enough time. So on this day that I got my license, when I was coming to the building, uh, that very same scenario happened. And I, and I don't know, I noticed that he kind of was looking at me and 
I didn't say, but but we were talking because they make it a habit to talk to you while you're driving because they say um, you got to know how to drive and talk so that when, you know, people are talking to you, you'll know what to do and, and be comfortable and don't just ride in quietness. So anyway, we was turning in to um, the thing. And so I turned before a car, but it was a good distance. And so... I turned and I, he said, park by the door, the front door. And, and right immediately, um, usually he'll have me park in a parking space away from the door or behind, behind where we parked it. And so that's just how he had the car to prepare for the next person. But this time, this day, he said, and it was March the, tw it was April the 25th on my niece's birthday. So he says to me, when I park, I park right beside, actually my ex-husband, park right beside him. And while we're in the car, my trainer asked me, he said, now what do you think you did wrong? And my heart dropped. And I said, maybe I took too long to turn right on red. <laughs> and he said, no, no, first first I said, um, I don't know. He said, you don't know what you did wrong? And then I'm trying to go through my head thinking, I thought I did pretty good. You didn't, I didn't, no reaction, no nothing. No, no. And I said, well, only thing I can think of, maybe I took too long to turn right on red. And he looked at me and he said, nope, nope. And I said, and I started to tear up now y'all i'm a crier i listen my feelings get hurt they can get hurt especially when i've been working hard i i cry so and i know i've been praying i know this is for me and then for him to tell me nope 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 and i'm thinking what did i do what did i do and he looks at me and he says nope you didn't do nothing wrong congratulations you got your license so i'm like I automatically do that, and I say to him, you serious? You're not playing with me? And he say, nope. And he tells me what made him pass me was I didn't hesitate to turn what I usually do, and he knew I was ready. And then he looks and he tells me, before I get out the car, he said, you know, it's kind of bittersweet. It's kind of bittersweet that I got to pass you. He said, because I've enjoyed every conversation that we've had from the time I first met you, uh, the first lesson to this one. He said, it never fails that every time you get in this car, you always encourage me. Now, what we, what we talk about to me is just regular stuff or, you know, him just getting me to talk while we were driving. So I would tell him about myself a little bit and tell him about my son and, and things and how things are going. And, and he says, you, I'm going to miss the times we talk and you encourage me. I mean, he said, you have said from the time you sat in this seat that you are determined to get your license within a year. He said, do you know you made it? It's a year that he said, congratulations. And he said, now come on in here and get your, get your paper to, um, and I know I got that picture where I'm holding up the paper at the courthouse going to get my license. So I said all of that and told this long 40 minute long story of how I learned to drive some of the disappointments to encourage anybody out there in the cp community any disability that you may have or anything that may be blocking you from going for what you want don't give up don't give up i don't care how many years i don't care what it looks like i don't care how many people are going against you i don't care how many people don't support you and it wasn't always easy for me to believe and trust and feel like this and say, it'll happen, it'll happen. Y'all heard me say earlier, I gave up a lot of times. I gave up on learning how to drive a lot of times. Not physically, but in my mind. It was like, it, went, it ain't gonna happen. So I said all of this to say, 
if you have anything that you've been wanting to go after and it looks like nobody is helping you, it looks like nobody wants you to get there, keep trusting, keep pushing, surround yourself with people who love you, surround yourself with people who's going to push you, surround yourself with people who are going to tell you when you say, I can't do it, surround yourself with those people that are going to say, what you say, you, you can't say that you ain't going to do it, you going to do it. Yeah. And surround yourself and know within yourself when you're about to give up, remember what God promised you. Because I said earlier that I had visions or dreams that I was in a red car years before. Guys, years before. Years before all of this. I was in my early 30s, I know. I know I was. Yeah, in my early 30s when that started coming, that I was going to be driving myself in a red car. Y'all, today, I'm going to put it up here. Today, I got a red car, and I call her Rosie. <laughs> and so, again, I can't stress this enough. God is good. And you have to continue to be determined and you have to be determined to, to not give up, keep the faith. Um, just don't give up, guys. We got a lot of strength. We got a lot of get up and go about us. People may see you on the outside and think that things are not going good for you or think that, oh, well, poor lady or poor man he can't do what but god says different god says different we are created i'm created to show people what kind of things that i can do through my faith and trusting yeah every day ain't easy because see people plays with your mind every day things change every day but if you know and you believe in your heart the dreams that you want to see accomplish go for them if it's school if it's learning how to drive and you know what you have to do in praying in the midst of praying you have to prepare you have to prepare when I knew that I wanted to get a car, when I knew that I wanted to learn how to drive, I started pricing cars. I started seeing what I needed to do to possibly get a loan for a car. I started asking friends and family what you do. I started paying more attention on how to take care of a car. I started pricing tires. Everything that it took to take care of a car, because everybody was telling me, oh, you might not want to, some people was telling me, you might not want to drive because the car is expensive. You might, because you got to have insurance right now, you ain't got to pay insurance. That's it, you got to do this, you got to pay for gas. You got to pay for upkeep. I knew all of that because I was helping take care of my son's car. That's what people didn't get. I knew all of that because I was helping take care of my son's car. Even before my son got his car, I was helping my sisters when one of my sisters, particularly when things would happen with her car. So I was paying attention that a car was a big deal when it came to money and living on the getting back to what I'm, what I was saying, listen, for those of y'all who are anybody, doesn't matter if you have a disability, doesn't matter if you um, if you are somebody that's been having something that you wanted to do and things has blocked you, or you feel like it's just not for me or it won't happen because doors are not opening every time I try to do something, every time I make two steps, two or three people close a door and tell me I can't do it, I can't do it. You know what? I got a motto in my house that I tell my son, I've told him ever since he was able to understand, can't is a four letter word in our house. Can't is a four letter word. So you, I wanna tell you, can't is a four letter word. Can't is a four letter word. C-A-N apostrophe T is a four letter word in my opinion. Don't tell me what I can't do. You give me a chance to do it. And you got to give me three chances for the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. After that third try, don't tell me I can't do it. I won't tell you I can't do it. What I'll tell you is I need a little help. And most of the time where I'm asking for the help, it's coming from above. So 
I encourage you guys, anybody who's watching me, anybody who happened to scroll down that has a family member with a disability and have a dream of learning to drive, it's never too late. I learned to drive in my 40s. I learned to drive in my 40s. Oh, I don't look 40? Thank you. Um, <laughs> but I learned to drive in my 40s. It's never too late. It's never too late. So don't give up on what your dream is. Don't give up on the promises that God gave you. And y'all, just keep pushing to my community, to my CP community. Keep, keep pushing. Don't give up. If family's not there, find, pray and ask God to let you find people that who are there for you. Pray and ask God to let you find people that will help you because God placed people in my life just right on time, at the right time. When some people wanted, when some people left, God replaced. When some people thought I was crazy, God replaced. So, but it's up to you. It's up to you to keep the determination. Don't give up. Don't give up. If I could do it, you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. I want to encourage anybody, if it's anything that's blocking you and you're scared of doing, know that you can do it. My favorite scripture, Philippians 4 and 13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. That's embedded in me. Even when days are hard and I seem like I don't want to listen, I seem like things are not going right and I want to have a pity party day. Even on those days, I turn to that scripture, Philippians 4 and 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Y'all have a good day and love you.